Happy Halloween! On today's episode of Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank, we hear a tale of deceit and betrayal, of love lost and of death. I can't, I can't do that voice. That was, that was, I'm horrible at impressions. That was my impression of Vincent Price. Um, if you don't know what uh, Vincent Price sounds like, you still don't know, because I'm horrible at impressions. Anyway, uh, welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank, number 29. Uh, on today's episode, I'm going to be talking to my friend uh, Jen Cole. This is the last of my New York uh, interviews, by the way. I did three. I did Kurt Metzger, uh, Mike Lawrence, and Jen Cole, and I split them up a little bit for no real reason. I have no rhyme or reason to these things. Uh, like, there's something in my head, but I don't really know what it is. Um, it's because I don't want to do too many dark things in a row. And this episode is talking to Jen all about her friend, uh, who committed suicide. La-di-da. Um, I, I don't know why, but I'm super intrigued by, by the idea and, 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 the, uh, and the details of suicide. Every time I hear about one, I want to hear all about it. I had a therapist who told me her son did it. And instead of going like, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I wish I could, uh, I don't know, comfort you in any way. I mean, it had been a long time before. But all I wanted to know about was how he did it. I, I don't know what it is. People say that suicide is really cowardly, but man, I just think the exact opposite. I think, it's, I think it takes more guts than anything you can ever do. To, to, go, to, to willingly go into the great unknown, to make that decision for yourself, to say, I am done with this life, I'm moving on, to, in all probability, nothingness. To just end it with nowhere else. Man, the guts that must take. They say it's cowardly because you leave people behind and they're going to feel sad. But, I mean, think about it in a, just from your point of view. God, that takes a lot of guts. Anyway, so my friend Jen, her friend had committed suicide a week before this was, uh, this was recorded. Um, so I also wanted to wait for a little while while their, uh, their feelings sort of... Um, came down. I didn't want anybody getting overly hurt um, from hearing these things. So I waited a month or two, and now, um, now I want you guys to hear the story. If you don't like hearing about this stuff, by all means, turn this off. But, uh, but I love it. I love it. Also, we make it as funny as possible, or I try to. Um, so that's it. Um, I just uh, want to say that um, I'm headlining the, uh, the Hollywood, Hollywood Improv on November 11th. Uh, please come to that. It's one of the few times you'll get a chance in Los Angeles to see me do like a longer set. So please come to that. It's uh, Friday, November 11th at 8 o'clock. Go to theimprov.com for tickets. Uh, I have no idea what else is going on. My next storyteller show is December 8th, so that's a long way away. Maybe virginity stories, but I don't know. Um, the last one was amazing. Paul Shear was great. Bronger was great. Uh, the Walsh brothers were great. I'm leaving people out. Um, but it was a really fun, really fun show. Um, so that's all the announcements, everybody. Uh, I'm glad you guys are liking these podcasts. Um, enjoy, enjoy wasting work as always. And, uh, enjoy Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank, number 29, Suicide, Jen Cole. If this is our last goodbye, and you don't care, so I won't cry, and you be You'd call it suicide But I'm too full To swallow my pride I can't, I can't I can't stand losing I can't, I can't Okay, I can't hello losing. Welcome to the Skeptic Tank I'm here with uh, my friend Jen Cole uh, How are you? I'm alright, how are you? Is that, did I say your name wrong? No Is it Cole? It's actually Colstein <laughs> Really? Yeah Really? No Oh <laughs> The next question was going to be Are you Jewish? <laughs> I don't know why I care, but I always ask people. I, like, I literally don't care, but I always ask people. I mean, maybe I do care. All right. Yeah, I think that means you do <laughs> yeah, care. Yeah, that sounds like I totally care. Um, all right, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about, um, about uh, like grief a little bit. We're going to, because you just had, well, why don't you tell me the story? 
Your friend. Um, yeah, I just lost a friend. Yeah. Killed himself. Yeah. I I'm going to take this a little a little lighter, but it doesn't mean I'm 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 um I'm not a uh, what's the word? aware or cognizant of your of your pain or anything like that, but it's just like I have I'm I'm removed from it a little bit cuz I don't know the person at all. Yeah. So I'll make jokes here or there. Yeah. So you know not to get offended. You're jokes. hung around comics, right? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, good. You guys don't make me nervous anymore. Okay, good. They used to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we met at the Comedy and Magic Club when you were a 19 year old intern. What, I don't know. When did you start worker. there? Office worker. Yeah. You started there with a full time job. Yeah. Okay. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you worked in the back office. You were there for like most of the show, and then you would leave. Yeah. Night shift. Always yeah. on the phones. Trying to draw a business. Yep. For the Christian. Sell tickets. Sell tickets. Oh, bullshit. Yeah. Oh, really? You would do that? Like promotion stuff? Trying to get old people to come? Yeah, for Leno. Yeah. That Every sounds week. sort of interesting, but sort of not. <laughs> um, okay, so then you moved to New York. You yeah. were going to move to London, but you fucked up. Yeah. And you didn't get a visa. I didn't fuck up. London fucked up. <laughs> By not having you? <laughs> what happened with that? I was detained and for not having a return ticket for my visa two years in advance. Oh, yeah, because you were just going to move there. Yeah. Or just figure out when you wanted to leave. Yeah, well, I yeah. had I had two jobs. I had a comedy club out there, and which club? Jonglers. Oh, I've heard of that one. It's a good spot. And so they turned you back. You yeah. got all the way out there. Yeah. Did you move there for a boy? No. No, no boy. For comedy. Comedy, okay. For the British comedy. For all right. <laughs> for maybe to meet Jimmy Carr. Have you met him yet? Several times. I met him again this summer. Jen's favorite comic is Jimmy Carr. Not right? favorite. One of your favorites. Used to be favorite, but oh. one of the top. But now you've met a lot more comics. Yeah. So you're aware of more comics. You know what he told me this year? Mm-hmm. I saw him in Montreal this year. And, me too. Uh, oh, that's right. You were there. Mm-hmm. That's right. But um, I was talking to the radio people, the people in charge of getting people uh, radio and TV spots to promote. And one of them was like, oh, so how are you feeling now, Ari? And I was like, you know, tired, I guess, but we're fine. What do you mean? <laughs> I always feel fine. And they're like, the cancer is all, all gone. I'm like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. And they're like, That's, didn't you have cancer? I'm like, no. And they said, Jimmy Carr told me you had cancer. I'm like, he was probably, uh, you, he probably knew me by the wrong name or didn't know who I am. That's probably Sabotage. what it was. Yeah, he go, she goes, no, no, no. He described you in detail. <gasps> it was definitely you. And he said, that's the reason your act is the way it is, is because you had cancer. <laughs> And so you don't really give a fuck anymore. And I was like, Jimmy Carr was fucking with you. <laughs> like, h- hard fucking with you. I've never had cancer. The worst disease I've had is diarrhea. Like, it's just not a problem. And then he, um, so I asked him, I was like, hey, by the way, good job making, playing a prank on those people. And he told me, I should really shut that off. <laughs> so unprofessional. Way I'm so go. unprofessional. That was like, it's coming in next. Um, and he was like, yeah, yeah. And then after like two minutes, he goes, oh, I should stop. I wasn't trying to play a prank on them. Somebody played a prank on me. I really thought you had ball cancer. Because I thought it was ball cancer, but it could have been some sort of cancer. I thought that's why your act was that way. Because you just stopped caring. Because you're like, fuck it. I've got cancer. I'll just say what I want. And he goes, whoever told me that was the good practical. I don't know who it was, but they got me. Wow. Yeah, I was like, well, that's not bad. You can keep spreading that if you want. I don't mind. It's, it's, a, it's like a compliment almost. Yeah. Yeah. I remember hearing you don't about, need cancer to not give a fuck. Yeah. That's pretty, I that's an admirable trait. Jeff Raleigh, this, this skateboarder who had the first, I don't really know that much about skateboarding, mm-hmm. but he had the first dark slide, which is when you flip your skateboard over. Yep. And, oh, you know about it? Oh, yeah. I guess Hermosa. Yeah. He's, no, no. The boys I'm about to talk about were skaters. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Are you a skater chick? He was supposed to teach me. Do you model most of your life after Avril Lavigne? <laughs> Would you no. say that's fair? No. All right, let's get into it. Let's talk Bitch about it. never came to Brooklyn. <laughs> So, <laughs> Brooklyn wasn't tough enough for her with that armband thing she had on all the time. Uh, uh. Um, okay, so, uh, all right, so let's talk about it. What happened? So, you know this guy. All right, so I have a, I knew this guy who was engaged to my roommate. He was deported about two years ago, almost the same time that I was, which is how I got my room in my current apartment with this girl okay and they were engaged but they had problems they fought it was a tough relationship yeah cheating on both sides Did you sleep with him 
No. Did you sleep with him? No. Did you make out with him? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> but Does your friend know? Does your roommate know? No. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. But um, a lot of tough shit. And then he got sent out of the country. To where? Back to his home, Guatemala. With Guatemala? Yes. They got together in Guatemala five years ago. Your roommate and this yeah. guy? What was she doing there? She went to, her dad works all over the world, and that was where they were transferred at the time, and okay, that's where they met, and she went to high school out there, and then Here's the only thing I know about here. Guatemala, from yeah. my time um, doing shows at the Ice House, in Pasadena, and talking to the Mexicans, doing crowd work and stuff, that Mexicans and Salvadorans um, sometimes dislike each other, sometimes don't, um, but no matter who they are, they all look down on Guatemalans. Yeah. They're like the lowest of the, of the Latino yeah. countries. Heard, yeah. They, it's interesting. They talk about that. And I've learned a lot of stuff about Guatemala and Guatemalans. And I would absolutely, it's become a dream of mine to go there because the culture is so. Really? It's actually rich and it's beautiful and it's so, it's poor. But, you know, there's a way of life out there that you just can't. I want to go to one of those countries, one of those super poor countries where you could get like a nice meal and tip really well and the whole thing costs you like $5 yeah. and they treat you like a king afterwards. Guatemala. That's Guatemala. That's Guatemala. All right, let's That's go. That's why I want to go. Okay. <laughs> I just want to look like a big shot. Um, I could see you finding a Guatemalan boy having a month-long fling. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, okay, so then, so then, um, all right. So, so they had problems. They're they got deported. back and forth between Guatemala. She was going to college in New York then. She, he stayed with her. And then they move around a couple different spots. And he gets sent back a couple years ago. So the past couple, the, since I've been here, he's been, they've been working to get a fiancé visa. Did so, you get that? Yeah. So you don't have to be married? Just planning a Well, That's the fiancé visa brings him into the country without any questions because he was once deported. They'll bring him back in the country so then they can get married within 90 days. And nobody really believed that he would get it. He's His family is originally Mexican, and so they all have Mexican passports, which is, you know, it's impossible Harder. to yeah, yeah get into America with a Mexican passport. And he got it. They got the. They spent months and months compiling five years of pictures and emails and all of the evidence that you need uh-huh. for a visa like that, and they got it. All by the way, anyone thinks about Latino people trying to get in to America is just the the, the border crossers, just the fence jumpers. Yeah. We, we don't ever cons- consider. I, mean, I don't know if you do. I don't ever consider <laughs> somebody's like, oh no, I want to relocate in. in- America. Yeah. He really, he yeah. wanted to start a media company out here. Mm-hmm. It's a better and, place for it in New York rather yeah, than Yeah. And he City. wanted to design his own skateboards. He worked at a skate shop out here yeah. in Brooklyn and he taught skating and he was. When I first um, started making money and I was able to buy my own clothes, I bought skate clothes a lot because they look cool. Yeah. They were wristbands. Yeah. And um, skate shirts are just, they're just well designed. They're just fun. Yeah, and, and these guys are all sponsored up. by skate companies, so they're just throwing Tons out these of free shirts. Shirt. Oh, it's awesome. Was he like a professional skateboarder? In Guatemala, he was not <laughs> so much in the New York scene, but seriously, there is the Guatemalan skate I scene. I can picture this Guatemalan skate scene as everybody just uses those things that Michael J. Fox did in Back to the Future, just no. broken off carts, no. <laughs> <laughs> just make the best. No, <laughs> they're doing. they've got real boards. They've got donkey carts, <laughs> sick boards out there too. Uh huh. But. So he, okay, so he moved back. So, yeah. Well, they get approved, but my roommate had fallen for somebody else. <sighs> yeah. The heart. Who was a good guy. Yeah. I like him. He's yeah. a good friend of mine. He's one of my close friends. And, you know, Chris was a good guy, but I'd never really met him. And he was... Chris was a Guatemalan? Yeah. Okay. Chris is the boy. He was... In his time away, she had fallen for somebody else. Yes. That shit happens. It does. How's it not going to happen? Yeah. It could happen if you don't see like everybody for like two days. Yeah. Some guy and girl hit it off. It's like, what are you... Yeah. I don't know. He's gone know. for the weekend. Shit, there it goes. Gone. Yeah. But she That's never... That's why I tell people just to cheat. 
Yeah. I was I like, mean, don't ruin the thing you have. That was really fun. <laughs> just have a little fling. Work that out. And if it's really, really good after like a month or two, then you can decide. Yeah. But most shit just ends fast. So just see what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to give your boyfriend herpes. That's all. <laughs> or girlfriend or whatever. Nice. Yeah. Well, she never... She it's still hard. continued with compiling the visa information and getting all that stuff, kind of believing that he wasn't going to come back. And I had talked to him a well, couple why would she, times. But she was on, doing work to get him back? Yeah. Believing he wasn't going to? Yeah. Okay. Kind of saving face oh, in yeah. a way, you know? And she didn't... I don't think she thought things would turn out... I mean... People do that. They just sort of continue. Yeah. Without thinking just about it. Just kind of keep going and just, you know, keep your usual stuff going. But she had someone there and she was waiting for Chris and... People just continue. Yeah. You just go through with it. Yeah. Without actually... And none of us really... I mean, I came into the apartment with this situation already. <gasps> you live happening. with the situation? No. Okay. With this situation, not the situation. No. Well, second best, <laughs> I guess. Okay. But I had never really met him and I, I knew of him and I knew who he was. But I... I didn't believe that it would happen either, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it's very tough to get those visas and with their circumstances and with his, like, I don't know. It's just a difficult thing. So nobody, it, she made it easy for us to kind of believe. I think she really believed that it wasn't, he wasn't going to come back. Okay. And so he gets approved and they get it. And as soon as they get it, he comes back. Boom, instantly. Instantly. He, within two weeks of them being approved, when you get a, when you get he a, bought a ticket and came out to New York. Yeah, wait, wait. When you get a, um, a fiance visa, do you have to get married within a certain amount of time? Ninety days. Oh wow. Yeah, and this was the beginning of July. Wow. So as soon as he got it, he was like, "Let's plan this thing." Yeah, he was like, "Let's do it," and he had a lot of time back home to think about how much he wanted to be with her and how much he missed her and how. He wasn't supposed to be gone. There's nothing else to do to in Guatemala. Think about your love and eat donkey meat. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, escape. there's very little, you know, entertaining things to do out there. Yeah. He played guitar and hang out on the computer and just had a yeah. job out there, just kind of saving some money. I miss your girl. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and she had, she had fallen in love with somebody else. makes my heart grow fonder. So he really was like... All right, well, if we're going to get married and if we're going to, you know, do this proper, I'm yeah. not going to fuck around and I'm going to I'm going to work for it and I'm going to work hard for it. And okay. he did. He, and he spent a lot of time working and preparing for this and all what? while Emily was just kind of like, "Oh." She was dating somebody else. Yeah. Okay. That's her real name. <laughs> Emily. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, that's that's out. Whatever. I uh, wasn't Lauren. What did we say before? Lauren. Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> My new thing is I've just forgiven people for acting any sort of weird way, especially in relationships or in some sort of um, heartache situations, just because it's like, yeah, it's weird. Yeah. You're like another guy. There's no rule book for how you're supposed to play things. Yeah. And every ex always says, well, if they hadn't done it like this, it'd be okay. Yeah. You're like, no, if they did it the exact opposite, you'd just be mad that they did it that way. Yeah. I've heard girls say, well, if you hadn't dated somebody hot after me, or I've also heard them say, if you hadn't dated somebody ugly after me. What does that say about me? It's just like you yeah. can't win. It's just, yeah. It it's sucks. just coulda, woulda, shoulda. So when was this that he moved out here? This was uh, beginning of July. Oh, okay. And we're, we're August. No, what are we in now? September. September. End of September. 20... 21st. Yeah, September 21st right now. Okay, yeah. this is the end of July? Yeah. Beginning okay. of July. Beginning of July. Two and a half months ago. Uh-huh. Okay. Because it's three months, 90 days. And he was supposed to um well anyways he comes out here and emily never told him about the other guy and i told her i you were like i was on her and i knew i i know about matters of the heart and how tough it can be on people and how it's better to be honest no matter what it's always less of a blow if you're honest it's hard you, you want to like it's hard to say it, but it's like it's so much worse when you don't. Yeah. It's like saying this like, is why. This is my reasoning for why it's so much worse if you don't. I will never, ever, ever, ever lie 
To anyone I care about. Yeah, you will. For anyone like this. No, maybe little white lies, but not in this. They'll build and build. This is some shit, you know? Yeah. This is... But here's what you'd have to do. You'd have to think, okay, this is this similar thing has happened before. Yeah. With negative results. Yeah. Maybe I should avoid negative results. Might not be the same, but avoid it and just rip off the band-aid. Well, also just think about where people are in their lives and where they are mentally. You can't be prepared for how they will take something if it goes horribly wrong, yeah. which this situation did. Okay. So, so he gets out here and she's shocked. She kept saying, I want to talk about it first, but she didn't, but she never really was honest about it. And he wasn't going to wait. He wanted to be out here as soon as possible. And who can blame him? Yeah. Going from Guatemala and where there's nothing out there to fucking do to back to fucking New York yeah. where everything you could ever want, you yeah. know, it's a his cool friends, city. his God. home. His... Being here, I really want to move again. Yeah. You better. I really want to move again. You really should. I thought to, it's because it's one nice week of the year. Yeah. <laughs> it's like pleasant out for the yeah. first time that's, ever. That's what I said. I tell my customers. It's the wrong time the to be visiting. Spring and fall in New York are just the most beautiful times, yeah. but it's only for a week. I tell people, I used to tell people I want to, I want to be out here week. six months out of the year, but it wouldn't be this, it wouldn't be six months in a row. It'd be like a quick yeah. three months, but like late April to, yeah, ugh, it gets so hot. But I was talking to Godfrey, of all people, <laughs> and he was just telling me how many, like legitimately how many spots you can get up. And he's like, if you really want to be a comedian, I don't know. It seems pretty simple. Yeah. Get more practice here. Yeah. What do you want to be? Anyway, whatever. So, all right, get back so, to your story. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. So he is out here and he's trying to figure out what to do about this. Emily is telling him, I can't. You can't what? I get married? I can't marry you. Is she telling she him why? Was, well, she was having. Not telling somebody is like saying, it's like driving to the airport with somebody without having bought tickets. Yeah. And then not telling the person. Like, it's yeah. going to come up. Yeah. It's gonna. She, I know, and she wanted to avoid it. And she was and hoping maybe her, he would break up with her avoid this. or not come. You have to talk about it. Yeah. You have to tell him. You have to tell him you're having second thoughts. You have to tell him before he fucking gets here. Yeah. Before. Yeah. Before. Don't make him relocate. Don't, yeah. Yeah. Don't totally screw, screw him over once he gets here. And What would happen visa-wise if he came here and then she was like, I don't want to go through with it. 90 days, he's got to leave? Yeah, he was supposed to oh. leave on the 28th. Of what? September. September. Okay. He was going to go live in the islands with his brother and work out there and save money until he... Which islands? Uh, Virgin Islands. Oh. British, British, uh, British Virgin Islands. Okay. And so he never made it, obviously. But so what happened? So she... They basically break up and... Wait, when? How? What, what, what happened? It was... Over a couple of weeks, they would just fight so much, and she never really outright said, I'm not going to do it. She kind of said, if you stop drinking, and if you do this, and I'll consider it, and kind of... Chicks will invent stuff. Kind of, yeah, held it over his invent head, and I felt why. she had no intention. We can feel... Guys, I knew, can you feel it We knew it like, wouldn't work. Yeah, it doesn't seem... It yeah. doesn't seem right how angry they are, but we're like, eh, girls, I guess we'll just fucking deal with it. Yeah. But it's like, no, it's about something else. Yeah. Lately, so, I've been doing this in relationship where I just, if somebody starts bitching, I'm like, look, I don't understand why you're, why you're being like this. It's annoying. You have to stop or tell me what's wrong. Yeah. This is not working. It was just going around the problem and just saying, yeah. well, maybe, maybe, maybe stay here for the opportunity. I'll marry you as a friend if you don't. I'll marry you as a friend? If you do this. And if you if do, you do that, what? Stop drinking and do like get your stuff together and find an apartment. And... Yeah. At some point, you'd be obligated to be like, even if we're breaking up, I still, I guess I got to marry you. Yeah. Because... You're here, yeah. and you won't be allowed to be here. Yeah, but okay. So, so, so she, she kept then, giving these rules to him. Yeah, but and, it was like an impossible standard, kind of. And I knew in the back of my head that it wasn't going to happen. We knew it wasn't going to work out. How old are these people? Uh, she is twenty-eight. She is my age, twenty-four. He's he's twenty-eight. Yeah. Okay, and she's twenty-four. Uh -huh. Okay. And so I, I mean, she just checking. knowing their history. Yeah. You knew it wasn't going to work. Well, because also she was He's, fucking someone else. Yeah. And in love with somebody else? I think so. Okay. And was she still in love she with, won't admit with to Paulo? It. Whatever, Chris? Yeah. Was she still in love with him too? She, she loved him for what they had and for who he was to her while she was growing up. She was, I mean, I mean, they've been together since she was 17. Uh, She's been very those. young. 
Where it's like yeah, deep it's a young like, yeah, it's a young relationship. It's a young yeah. love, and it was like it's kind of dangerous, you know. They were skaters, and they would always go out and break curfews and do the bullshit and fuck around, and yeah. no one cared. And there was this girl always that used to in work trouble. Dallas Improv, Addison Improv, a uh, waitress, and she was super hot. Yeah, like ridiculously hot. She used to wear short shorts, just just starting her sexuality. Like didn't really Ugh. understand how. Yeah, and bitch. she was dating some guy who was kind of a loser. <laughs> he was, I, I don't think he had a job or had some shitty like worked in a you know a, a like a. Oh, why can't I think of that word now? <laughs> Where they rent DVDs, whatever place those those are. Blockbuster. Yeah, that's the word I was looking there for. You go. Jesus, my pot is ruining my brain. <laughs> but um, they yeah, don't and, exist and anymore. Like, oh, it's okay, okay. but they that. yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's a good point. <laughs> no one will remember them soon. <laughs> It's like that, Wayne Huizenga. People um, in the future are going to listen to this podcast and go, what's what? Blockbuster? What the fuck? What does that mean in the past? But, um, but uh, oh yeah, but she was started dating him when she was 16 and she was like, no, we're just dating. And we're like, yeah, if you had to date him now, you'd be like, no, no, you have to get your shit. I'm better than you. But then it just sort of sticks. So you just sort of stay in it. So yeah, you like somebody when you're little and you just, yeah, you, you've developed those feelings. That I, that was, yeah, that was kind of what this was. It was, we've been together this long and we've had plans to do this for a long time and you know mm -hmm. we were just gonna follow through with it so he's out here and living in our apartment yeah and there's fighting and there's just non-stop till all hours of the night and couldn't stand to be around each other it just it wasn't gonna work yeah i really believe it wasn't gonna they lived work. together with you yeah when did you make out with him? Uh, months later. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay. not that much of a bitch so... anymore. <laughs> but he I, he was good friends with my boyfriend before he had moved away. He was good friends with the whole skate crew. Before who had moved away? Before Chris moved away. Before he got deported out of New York. The and first he, time? Yeah. Okay. And he had roots here. He really had friends and family out here mm -hmm. that loved him and cared about him. And my boyfriend was one of those guys. Okay. And so they hadn't seen each other in all this time, and he was so excited that he was back. So I brought Chris over to my boyfriend's house, and they got to reconnect, and it was just, he was so happy. It was so great. I was so happy that I could bring them back together like that, you know? Was it beautiful? Was it a beautiful moment? It was. It really was. Was it like that guy who met that um, lion after not seeing him for um, for 30 years? Or what, tiger? What lion? Did you ever see that video? What? The guy who trained a lion or a tiger when he, when he was little, and then they released him into the wild? No, and they I met again know. like twenty years later. Maybe the lion remembered him. It was on Oprah. It was. I don't watch Oprah. It was beautiful. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> well, it was a beautiful moment. Let's call it the lion moment. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but he he started finding his friends again and started getting back into his routine and figuring out how he could stay out here and save money. Yeah. And. He, at one time, he was working three jobs, a couple restaurant jobs. He was... Oh, Jesus, Latino he was people dealing. are so... Strange. I know. He was dealing? He was dealing, too. What was he dealing? He had some good shit. I got called out on the subway because he got me some sour, and I was in bed yeah. on the subway, and like in a little baggie, and it was broken, and the guy is like looking around and he can smell, smelling yeah. it, and he looks at me, and he goes, you stink like that? <laughs> and I'm like all dressed up and nice and cute. And I'm like, excuse me? And he's like, you got that sour? He knew what it was from He smell? knew what it was. Wow. Knew immediately. From smell. From smell. In the subway. Wow. From five feet away. And that's that's not a, uh, what's the word? a sterile environment. The subway no. has lots of other smells lots, that are going to be mixing with that at all times. Warm. Yeah, hotness. Hot, that ugly. Hot air that comes at you sometimes. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Like pissed mixed with air and yeah, trash, and neglect, yeah, yeah, and drunkenness. Do you get worried on the subway late at night when you're like when not how many people are on there? No. When I leave a subway, not during a day when it's like packed, that's fine. But whenever I leave, like I don't know, like 11 p.m. when it's maybe only two or three people get off, and I, if I'm with like a girls in front of me, I always feel like they think I'm gonna rape them, <laughs> and I always immediately consider how I could do it if I needed to. Like where I would go. If you needed to? If I was a rapist. If you needed to rape someone. If I was a rapist and I had the need. If I, if I had the... <laughs> and then I also always think that I'm going to get mugged at the same time. It always seems... But I'm wondering for, for a chick, do you get worried at all? 
No. Oh, I watch too many movies. I, I no. I'm now. I'm pretty I'm toughened up out here. Yeah. I know I know my. Have you ever been accosted by a guy? Sure. Really? Yeah. Like semi raped. Mm. Or just like hey baby. He just kind of like pushes himself on you and you know. Yeah. The fuck, man! Get the fuck off me. That's what he says to you to get you. No, in, that's what I mood. said. I know. That's what I said. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's what he said. I attacked him. That's where the story was going. <laughs> um, okay, so I just can't be stopped. <laughs> so he's here. So you met your you met your boyfriend. He's had all these friends. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was I came into this group much later. Everyone had known everyone before mm-hmm. I was even here. Yeah. B- before he got deported, before I showed up, and so they've all got stories going years and years back and i'm just the new girl not the new girl anymore but i'm the girl bringing him back to his group you know and <clears throat> so he he eventually gets kicked out of our apartment because the tension is just too much and i spend a lot of time with him there talking every night talking him through the stuff and talking to chris about what stuff yeah just about everything Adjusting situation to- and uh, with staying in New York, not staying in New York, having a plan. How do you talk to him? Okay, <clears throat> uh, Emily's gone. Let's just say for the night or the day or whatever. Yeah. She's gone. She's going to get coffee, and yeah. you're talking to, yeah, to Chris. Yeah, and you know she's been cheating on him. Yeah, or I wouldn't even call it cheating. It's just being torn. Yeah. Well, he knew. He did know. He ended up going through Facebook and found out the truth. Facebook detectives. Yeah. It's breeding a whole new... Fucking Facebook. New... <sighs> yep. Did he have her, like, password or anything? Or I think he... so. Or it was... I mean... You can do the math. You can be like, wait, who's yeah. that comment? And figure out who they are and then see uh, their page and... Yeah. Wait, you want to be that I mean, he saw, he saw sure. like, the, the hints like that. Mm-hmm. But then he straight up went in her messages and checked it out and saw how long it had really been going on. Yeah. And he was fucking crushed. Yeah. You know, to discover that... When I dated that chick Natasha, I used to look at her her MySpace and her emails, oh, and then so I find funny. out she was dating somebody else through that. It's just so crushing. You have to keep reading more. Yeah, it's so you're unhealthy. so curious, and you're like, "Stop it, yeah. stop Don't it!" But I want to know Don't more. I want to yeah. know more. You're like, what's more to know? What's and then you know, know, and you're just like, "Fuck!" Now I, I wish I details. I can't yeah. un I can't unknow that. That's why I tell Fuck. people: just cheat on whoever you're with here or there. Don't go crazy. Once a year, twice a year, whatever it is. And then just don't ever tell them. Just be really, be really secretive about it. Just don't let them know. No one needs to know that. Or if you do, come clean immediately. And well, no, I I am part of the come clean immediately. Really? School, yes. And I won't be mad. I won't. I'll understand. No, you won't. Yeah, I will. If somebody tells you, because they can't fault me for it either. Because I would do the same thing. Honest to God. I I totally believe that. But he found out the truth and it became not so much a marriage as just a marriage for staying in the country. Wait, they were married? No. No. They... It became the possibility oh, of it, it became be. it would be married for friends. Okay. Marry as friends and he would have separate places and I told her, you know, you can't do that. The government really looks out for it. Yeah. They had talked to someone on the street who was asking about skateboarding, but he looked like a government official. He's like white shaved head, you know, in a suit and he's asking questions about skateboarding. It's like To who? To her? To them, yeah, mm-hmm. you ran into him on the street. Oh, because that's what you're living. Government's fucking watching. They're looking. I I warned her, and I said it can't. If you do it as a friend, you got to be careful. Yeah. And the, well, the repercussions they do know a lot of about it is like other, twenty thousand dollar fine and jail <sighs> time, and he gets deported immediately. And it's like serious consequences if you, you yeah. know, if you really try and pull the sheet over their head about the marriage. I was gonna marry my friend David Taylor. When uh, when gay marriage was first legalized, the very first time, yeah, for like a few weeks in San Francisco, like five or six years ago, I would have liked to have been at that wedding. Yeah, and I was like, dude, it'll be hilarious. First of all, <laughs> uh, he's like, no, my mom's gonna find out. I'm like, okay, sure, that's a negative, but here's a positive: you get health care now. Ah. And he was like, oh, I didn't think about that, <laughs> but he didn't do it. He was so worried about what his mom would think. Um, okay, so they're thinking of continuous. How was the when he found out? How was that? Like, how was that time? It was crushing because yeah. he came here under the idea of well, I have this girl I love. I have this girl and we're going to make it work and I'm going to be in New York and it's just going to work. We're yeah. going to make it work. It has to work. 
and that was it. Sure. And he was crushed, and he wanted it so bad. Whether he wanted to be in New York or he wanted to be with her, he this was where he needed to be, and this was everything that he'd been thinking about and planning for. And you know, it's kind of like my London thing all yeah. over again. He just took it a lot harder. Do you have a boy in London? Yeah, you said you didn't. I had well, I it wasn't for the boy, but I had a boy. Yeah. Yeah. You were already like let's try to work make that work. Yeah. Yeah. But that was not the Does primary. anybody move for other reasons besides a possible hookup? <laughs> I don't think they do. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Or to run away. I'm from sure. Who you don't I'm want sure. To be with yeah. I'm sure. I came to New York not for a boy. There you yeah, go. Okay. There's all your evidence. Half the people I know in LA moved to LA to start comedy just to either run away from a girl or to be with a girl. Oh fuck LA. Fuck LA. In okay. general. <laughs> I don't care about LA. You hate it now? I, I have hated it all my life. Oh. Why else would I leave my the best job in the world? Oh yeah, like in the worst job. city in the world. <laughs> Hermosa Beach, Los LA. Angeles. Um, okay, so they broke up. It was hard. Yeah, and so he would stay up all night and talk to me and just try and figure it out and just talking it out and drinking. And... What are we trying to figure it out? Like, well, what should I do? Can I get her back? Yeah, he wanted to fight for her. Yeah, she didn't want him to fight. She just wanted to. We're friends now. I've moved on. That's the risk that of fighting of for a girl. Yeah. We're like, I'll look really foolish. Like, yeah. keep after this. Yeah. And it's still. Like, but I it is the ultimate enough. scenario where you would want to fight for someone yeah. because it's not like just a boyfriend, girlfriend break up. It's like your future Ugh, country. Gotta leave the country. Yeah. You know, it's everything was just upped. You From know, her standpoint, though, that, that's got to be freeing where it's like, if we break up, yeah, we have to leave the country. Forever. Yeah, it was. And it was tough on her, too. It was so tough on her, too. I'm not going to say she must that she, bad. Oh, she felt horrible. She yeah. did feel horrible. And she just ending that kind of relationship is tough on anyone. And she did love him very much. But it just it just wasn't going to work. Yeah. So he's living with he ended up moving in with my boyfriend after they got you know, back together. He lived in a one bedroom out in Crown Heights and Well just... the Jews are from and the blacks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well most of the Jews are in Williamsburg and my neighborhood. But those are the Hasidic Jews. They're the in Williamsburg yeah. and Crown Heights. Williamsburg. And some in Crown Heights. I remember there's some riots in Crown Heights. They're the scary before you were born probably. Yeah. A long time ago. It was because they had this Jewish um ambulance service. Yeah. And some people they just had like hit. a 20 year celebration of peace oh really about it yeah some kids got hit black kids and white kids got hit by a car or something like that and then yeah. the control driver and then the ambulance came and just picked up the jewish kids yeah but it was a jewish ambulance only supposed to be for jews but it's like pick up everybody just take yeah. them to the hospital yeah maybe they didn't have room or something and yeah that started riots i don't know but what the black people never understood in that whole thing was that black people are worth less than jews <laughs> and so that if you keep that in mind then obviously the choice is save the Save the Jewish kid. <laughs> um, anyway, so <laughs> that's just mathematically proven. All right. Um, I I'm love, not going to I argue. love when super racist do that. That's just science. <laughs> like, what science? You just made some shit up. <laughs> um, okay, so so they're, you're, they're living with your boyfriend. Yeah. And he's hustling, working hard. He was at my bar all the time, come yeah. visit me and hang out. And we got to be really close. He got to rely on me and... Him and Emily's eyes became separate. They didn't talk very often. But he they was going to have to go. Or were they still planning on going through? Well, they were still trying to... She was trying to let him do his own thing and prove that he could, you know, be here on his own two feet and holding a job and so not she fucking up. trying to make up. these rules like I'm doing it for your own yeah, good. Try, yeah, trying... Yeah, like he's a grown adult. Thing. He can do it. What do you mean? Yeah. You're not in charge of making sure he's and okay he was, here. And he was doing all right. And yeah. we were with him. I mean... It was in a one bedroom that these two guys shared and I would stay there occasionally. So three of us in just one bed, all, Mm -hmm. you know, talking and drinking and playing guitar and smoking and just hanging out and having a good time. And he just, he loved us. We were his last family. We were literally his last family. And he told us that all the time. He, we tried to convince him that. She the breakup was, was a bruise. Yeah. Oh yeah. She was. A, it was. It was bad for him. It wasn't going to work. That's all he it was bad is. for her. And yeah. despite what they had in the past, it was a bruise. And now you move on. Whenever my friends break, have heartbreak, it, like everyone tries to give them advice and stuff, but I've been through it enough. Where I'm like, it's you're just not going to feel any better. 
Yeah. Until some time goes by and then yeah. you just will. Yeah. And not enough so, time went by. And we yeah. tried to talk to him and we tried to just get him through it. And, and then when was this? When he was living with you and your boyfriend? Yeah. He was... When was this? This was the month of August, mostly. Okay. And... Last month. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I had just gotten back from Montreal, and it was about a week after that. Montreal was fun, right? Montreal was a fucking blast. If, if any comics are listening, try your best to get into Montreal. It's so much fun. If there's any comedy fans listening, get your ass to Montreal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it was a great shows too, I guess. <clears throat> yeah. Not even about that, but yeah. Amazing. But he, and he was, he loved comedy. He was fucking funny. If there's anyone I've ever met who is naturally talented yeah. as... Chris? Yeah. Did he ever do it? I, that's what makes, that's what kills me about this. I spent so much time, <clears throat> excuse me, convincing him that he should try it. Yeah. He could, he could just talk to you and I have you laughing. rolling in two really? minutes. Everywhere we went, anyone he that. talked to, any, it was just one of those guys. He was just funny. And I told him, you need to get your ass on stage. You really do. I've seen incredible people. I've yeah. seen the worst. You I've could get up there, and I have. Once you've seen me. enough shitty comments, you're like, oh yeah, any <laughs> literally anyone can do it. If yeah, those guys have done. Yeah, it. if they're trying it, yeah. you should definitely give it a go. <laughs> but I finally got him up on an open mic. He finally got the balls to do it. I was on him about writing and getting some stuff together, and I was, I was a hundred percent behind him. Yeah, I knew he could do it. And the Monday, last Monday. Last Monday? He did it. He, he went, went on stage. stage. Where? Um, just some little bar. Okay. He was doing open mic. And they had a couple other guys just doing some jokes. That's, Five minutes. That's the thing, too, about New York. There's like 40 clubs, but there's like a million there's, yeah. bar rooms. And yeah. Which, whatever. There's tons. And I have the information somewhere. I so he did it. My phone. But he did it. it. He killed it. Really? He was fucking awesome. He prepared really hard? Well, he was drunk. <laughs> okay. Because he was so nervous. Yeah, he was that's so what scared. I was my first time. Yeah. But do, like, still be able to get up there years. drunk and do it and do well Yeah. and be one of the best ones of the night, uh-huh. I was fucking proud of him. I was so stoked. I didn't even care that he was drunk. I was just proud that he did it and that he saw it. Was his drinking do it. really a problem? Or was that something Elmer Lee's holding over problem. his head? It okay. was a problem. I'm not going to lie. He drank a lot. He drank. I mean, well, maybe you should yeah. be a comedian then. Yeah, that he was. Right. He was a comic. <laughs> he was a natural-born comedian. He was fucking funny. He had problems, and he loved to rag on himself. Yeah, that's good. But he could make people laugh, yeah. and he had he had shit that he, you know, he had shit to say. He had a lot of stuff figured out. Okay. So he he gets up last Monday and he does it and some of his friends are there I had to work I was so so mad that I had go? to work I couldn't go so how you know he killed it cause he told me his friends told me there's I mean some okay. of his friends were there there is and I know the bits he did he told me the bits okay. you know and I've worked and I well. worked on the bits with him yeah nice you were his writer I was I, nice. I did help <laughs> I had I, I hate to credit myself but I did have a very integral part in getting there's something fun getting when you, up when you just participate with somebody a little bit he was my fucking prodigy yeah he was my get, comedy like, prodigy there, like I made that up yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was so proud of him Ari I was so fucking proud of him yeah. and right after he came to my bar to tell me all about it and how proud he was and you had already made out at this point no you hadn't yeah. no still not okay no because I was going to ask you when you said you guys all slept together, but nothing, no. nothing crazy like that ever happened. No. I was, it wasn't really making out. It was just friendly kissing. I mean, I was with my boy and, yeah. you know, it was just nice. Just made out. Yeah. Just make him feel loved. Just Did you tell your boyfriend afterwards? He was there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's okay. Yeah. It was all, it was all in love. It was yeah. all literally just in love. Yeah. And I used to do that with my friends in college. We were just like, let's just kiss for a while. Yeah. Just me- relax. Yeah. And we were all so close. We all, within a month, I mean, we were, you know, it's an intimate friendship, you know, that you always. What is that? There's some alarm going off somewhere. Tamagotchi. Fucking Baldinger. I know. He he sets, uh, he, he 
here's what I do, where he sets his alarm away from his bed so he can't just hit it off his get up, wake him up. But he's hit snooze like 40 times. Yeah. And it's so loud. Yeah. And he's got it almost set to the, to the news station. So it's just this like, like, cackly, like, it's just horrible. That's what I do. I set really? mine to static. Loud static. That's the only thing that'll wake me up. Otherwise, I feel like people are talking to me in my dreams. Really? They're singing to me. Yep. <laughs> People are like, oh, yeah, that happened to me last night. It happens to me every night, okay. every morning, because I smoke myself silly to sleep. Oh, yeah. And then I'm in that haze in the morning where I'm just like. Still high. Oh. You wake up in the middle of the night super wide awake? Once in a while. I think it's from pot, but it's not if it's once in a while. A lot of heavy pot, I do it all the time. Oh, my God. What, what is that? Where is that coming from? I have no idea. I bet it's coming from his room. Probably. I'm going to hit pause for a second and try to find it. I wonder if I know how to pause. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now the first successful pause in a pause. Okay. Right. Where were we, young lady? Uh, okay. So he was living with you. He did his open mic. Yeah. When was this? A week ago? This was uh, a week and two days ago. Today is Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday the 21st. And this was on Monday? Yeah. The 12th. Monday the 12th. Yeah. Okay. So going through his last couple of days, we were, I was staying over there almost Where? three at, nights a week. At the boy's at, house. At the boy's house. Three nights a week, maybe four, you know, depending. I stayed there on Monday night. Yeah. And we drank and hung out, usual. Yeah. He came, we went over there after I got off work. He often hung out with me until I was off work. At then, work? Yeah. At the bar? At the bar. Oh, it's super convenient for an alcoholic. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Cheaper drinks, probably. Free Slash drinks. free. Yeah. yeah. Um, One of my best friends, of course. Yeah. You want a tab? Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. And so, and he would entertain my customers so much. Really? Anything he said, he could get anyone talking and everyone loved him. He was such a great person he was yeah. so funny and people would like at the service they were saying if if you knew him for five minutes you knew him you knew who he was you knew his spirit you knew what he was about he was a really simple guy and he just he had things like he would always say you know you're every, everyone's right as long as everyone's doing right by themselves they're doing right they're doing okay like that. and yeah as long as you're doing your thing and you're on your own shit and you're handling what you need to handle, you're right. And no one can tell you what to believe, what to say, what to think, what to do, where to go. Yeah. You're you're just right. You know? He he was deep like that. He and yeah. he would and he would say this like as he's finishing his, you know, his 40. Beer. Yeah. You know. 40? Yeah. He drank that much. He drank a lot. God. Yeah. The, this one night these guys were he had one of his friends over, one of his Guatemalan friends. They put away 50 beers <gasps> in about three hours. What? Yeah. Wow. He could drink with whiskey. Like, a lot of Jack Daniels. Had he finished off a bottle of Canadian Club? He, like, good Gosh. couple. Yeah. Yeah. He could put it away. He definitely could. And I, I do understand where she came from when she said the drinking needs to stop or at least minimize. Yeah. And it did for a while, but it wasn't enough. Can't and it was it was else. that you gotta figure out why yeah if you should shouldn't drink for yourself you can't do it just because emily's gonna be upset yeah it's gotta be like oh emily's right i'm ruining my life yeah but anyway yeah and he didn't see it that way yeah and you know it wasn't he was still working hard and he would just he'd get trashed to like three four five in the morning and go to work at six wow i would literally have to functioning kick alcoholic. him out of the bed physically kick him because he was so passed out or yeah. dump water on him it was impossible to wake him up but he would as soon as he felt like pressure or a hit or he would water he'd wake up and he'd say oh fuck you thank you jen uh-huh. <laughs> you know because he knew he had to get up and he knew he had to he was on his shit he was still handling his stuff and i was proud of him for that and he would go to work and he would bust his ass and he'd make money and sell his shit and he was doing it yeah. For a while he was doing it and he had money and it wasn't as bad as he thought it was. What did you know? he think was bad? 
that he had to leave the country. That yeah. He wasn't going to get married. And... He did have to leave the country, right? Mm-hmm. He wasn't going to get married. But mm-hmm. that wasn't that bad. It eventually came out that he w- it wasn't going to happen about three, four weeks ago. Was he still trying to get her back, Emily? Yeah. He's he was still, yeah. But after a while, it became apparent to him and he was just crushed. She moved on. Yeah. He, she was, he was crushed about it. And she was crushed to do it to him, but yeah. she wasn't as affected by it because she had she moved, she'd on. moved on. She has a heart she, full. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you feel bad for doing that to someone you still sort of care about? Yeah. Like them and she did care about him. She did love him, but it just, it wasn't going to work. I could say it a million times. Yeah. I knew it wasn't going to work. He didn't. He really thought it would. Louis uh, C.K. used to do a bit about... I love Louis. Yeah, he's great. He's great. <laughs> but he did... Um, two years ago in Montreal, he did this. When he was said... Um, he got divorced. And everyone like, oh. He goes, don't... Oh. Don't, it's, first of all, don't... Oh, my happiness. Yeah. And second of all, yeah. <laughs> he goes, there's no divorce that's ever ended a good marriage. Like, no good marriage ever ends. Like, suddenly, like, oh, everything's great. What, divorce? Yeah. It's like, it's really shitty, at least from one person's side. Yeah. It's bad to yeah. end things. Yeah. Anyway. So, it was kind of... Over from her side of things. Yeah, yeah. And he was, he just spent all this time, you know, thinking about her, missing her, and preparing, and yeah. he wasn't hemisphere. ready for it to end that quickly, you know. You can't he accept it. still it's had a heart full, too. Yeah. You know, just for the wrong side. And so he, his last couple of days were, they were good. Yeah. He seemed happier. He was doing his normal stuff. What do you mean happier? Because he was accepting. He seemed better. He was like, my boy got him on um, some Kung Fu stuff. What do you mean? Got him studying like the I Ching and uh-huh. the Tao and all that stuff. And he was really just soaking it up like a sponge. Like that whole day before he kept everything. We watched so many Kung Fu movies and just mm-hmm. was so high and just, was, Oh, fucking awesome. And he would just, there's one of them, Buddha's fist. That was his favorite. And in that yeah. movie, they keep saying Buddha bless, Buddha bless you, Buddha bless. Buddha bless. And they go like this a lot. Yeah. And so he was doing that all day. He was just really? everything you said. Like oh, Buddha bless, Buddha bless, Buddha <laughs> bless you. And he was really into it. And even with his, um, as part of, I think it was part of his suicide note, he wrote down some of the characters. I, he, I haven't studied it, so I don't know exactly what it is. But there are symbols where you can do like dashes, and there's breaks in the lines where, it, depending where the breaks are placed, it becomes a different symbol or it becomes a uh-huh. different meaning. Yeah, okay. and then. He wrote it down, and Jason was able, my boyfriend, was able to find the passage that he was, you know, Office kind of, of uh, copying. Yeah, and figure out what he was And saying. figure out what he was thinking and trying to say about, and it was about, like, once you've, once you've been able to accept certain things, there can be no, there can be no anger in the future. There can only be peace and there can be insight and there can be, it was a really beautiful passage. I wish I could remember it better, but he was really getting into it and he was really studying it and doing well. And we really thought he was on the up. He had fun doing comedy that one time. He had a blast. Yeah. And one of his friends that was there told me they hadn't seen him that happy ever. he, He could be a happy guy and he could be really really fun and just over the top like full of life all yeah. the time but said he'd never seen him that happy it's a cool drug stand up it is it's, it's, a, it's different, a great different and i thought drugs. that's what he needed i really thought that would be something that he could use and i i told him use that pain use the hurt you know yeah. that's how these sure. guys do it that's how that's how you start that's how i've seen so many people do it like that and you have the perfect platform to just go you've got it you've got the natural talent you've got mm-hmm. the style you've got you don't give a fuck you'll say anything it's fucking funny he would talk about one of his bits was one of his friends told me about this recently but he would say you talk about farting and i hate fart jokes i think it's easy and it's terrible <laughs> I don't you know them. I like. Yeah, I mean everybody right. to each his own. Yeah. But Chris had one of the best You're a girl. fart Guys jokes I've ever funny. heard. Well, yeah. he had one of the best ones I've ever heard. He would say, "Like I'm gonna fart, but I'm not just gonna fart. I'm gonna fart like the most beautiful woman you have ever 
wanted to fuck because she farts just like me. So mm. while I fart, I want you to think about the most beautiful. <laughs> and he would just, he was funny. He had that, I don't care. I'm going to say it. You know, it was the truth. It was God honest truth. Yeah. You know? And so he, I don't know. Where was I? You tell me he was happy. Yeah. Right. So he was happy to be doing comedy. And I told him, you're going to do it for a long time. I'm going to keep on you. Yeah. You're going to keep doing this. And when you're in the islands, you're going to write. And I'm going to have you send me material. Yeah. And I want I want to talk about it. And I want to help. And Did we could be writing partners. Date? Huh? Did he have a, like a deportation date? Yeah, the 20th. The 20th. September 28th. September 28th. Yeah. And they told him already, you've got to be gone then. Or he knew. Well, that was the day the visa expired. And if you get caught in the country with your visa expired... It's serious consequences and, and like it's jail time and you're breaking the visa and you didn't get married. So wow. that's where the serious consequences happened. So he had to be out by the 28th, but he didn't want to go. He wanted yeah. to stay here and it broke his heart to leave. And it was, that was another thing that was crushing him was that he had to leave. He wasn't yeah. ready to leave after he'd been planning for being here for so long. God, and it's it so just hard been... to leave your apartment, let alone yeah. going cross town or cross country. Mm -hmm. And it would have been his second cross country move in less than three months yeah it's well, a lot to handle it's a lot yeah. to god especially you have this future set up for you, you yeah. in your mind you're like okay we're getting married yeah new york with this girl and then it's just rerouted and you're not living with this girl and you're not even living in new york yeah and you're like what yeah so he was kind of disoriented about that too but so monday night he did that slept together hung out you know usual yeah. Saw him on Tuesday. He came to my comedy show. He came to Righteous Kill. Mm -hmm. And he was there a lot. I got him on the guest list all the time. Yeah. And he he loved it. He loved seeing it. And he saw some really great guys there. I wish he had seen you. I told him you were going to be there. Yeah. And I was like, you got to see this guy. You didn't make it. Nope. Week so long. last Wednesday. Yeah. He killed himself. He hung himself. Hung himself. Hung himself with Somewhere. in my boyfriend's apartment. And what, what he, did he, use? he used this is funny. This is classic Chris. Yeah. He used a belt, but not just any belt. He went through a couple and he had his cheap made in China belt and he went for my boyfriend's best belt. Thick leather. Thick would get the job done kind of thing. Because he couldn't use his own? Cause yeah. Because he would think like, oh, that's going to hurt. That's going to fucking strangle me for a long time. <sighs> yeah. So he got the big belt. He got the one with the huge buckle and wrapped it. He did it. He did it right. He wrapped it a couple times and they wrapped. have... What do you mean wrapped it a couple times? Wrapped it around his neck. A couple times. Uh -huh. And then had it... The buckle part? Yeah. And had the buckle on... There was... They have uh, water sprinklers okay the sprinkler that comes through the apartment and, and he put there's that. just one pipe that goes across and they used to he knew it would hold him because they used to do pull-ups there how could he put the buckle on the pipe he wrapped it around once yeah he wrapped it around his neck and he was on a stool so he flipped it over and then kicked the stool and hung himself right in front of how far away was his, was his was the cause belts aren't that long how, like was he like right up against the he was pretty close and yeah. he just hung yeah and the thing is, it's a one bedroom, so it's small. And were you guys home? Jason, no, he did it while we were out. We left him that day, Tuesday night. He was really fucked up. He bought a lot of coke. Yeah. And did almost a gram. In was a that a normal, hours. a normal thing? No, for him? no. And he was so against coke. Uh -huh. He was so against it. And I will never do it again, ever, 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 because of this. I'm not he always just, said, I never, really never do it. Like seeing people on coke. Yeah. He always said never do it in the summer. Never. Why? He was so against it because it was only a winter drug and it was meant to just warm you up and Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was his belief. Never heard that. Yeah. He was adamant against doing it in the summer. So that's how we know it wasn't It's a winter drug. It's like a squash. Yeah. Exactly. So it's a squash of <laughs> horrible addictive drugs. Yeah. Um So he did a bunch of it. He made jokes about it like I wonder if I could do the whole two grams and see if my heart would explode. How often do you make jokes about that? He just talked about that once. He's like, I would buy it and just see. Because he was starting to feel hopeless. Yeah. And he would... 
he would mask all of this with, oh, come on. I'm just fucking joking, guys. Come on. Yeah. And I'm like, you better be joking, you piece of shit. If you ever. I used to make jokes about it all the time. Yeah. My friends got bothered by it. And then I was like, just jokes. Until I realized like, it wasn't jokes. I'm just, honestly, all the time thinking about just killing myself. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I would have. I mean, I have no, and I have no actual experience in suicide prevention or knowing the signs of just how deep they can be or i mean we knew he was upset kind of depressed we didn't think it was anywhere near this yeah and he he was so happy and go lucky most of the time and just so full of life and energy and talent and you'd never think i mean people were shocked to hear it because they're like what him but he was just telling me jokes. He was just fucking around. He was just here. He was just so talking about how he couldn't wait to do this. And he had this plan. And he was. And he never he really talked, life. To, talked about suicide before Mm-mm. or anything like that. Mm-mm. No signs of depression. Never. Never talked about it. No mania. No. N- it, never, it never got to that dark of a place where I thought, oh, okay, maybe now I should listen. Yeah. You know, he covered everything with jokes. And I don't even think he meant it. I, we really think it was a mistake. That It was just, he had done so much. He stayed up all night that night and we talked to him. He went for a walk at like, him and my boyfriend went out to the stoop to talk after I had fallen asleep that night at like five in the morning and I woke up and I was really pissed. I'm like, where the fuck are you guys? You're trying to make me worry right about before. you. Yeah, Tuesday night after my show, I'd come over and mm-hmm. he was like, he was he already had done some and was on it and just you know <sighs> freaking out and twitching and is that a thing talking that talking talking, 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 talking i've never heard of that what is that a possible like problem with coke do people ever do this is this a- well it's that he had done so much it was really shitty coke is a gram a lot i'm not a coke guy a gram is a lot how much is normal percentage of a gram <sighs> i know grams from pot i i don't even do it that much so how much is I a line? Even think. How much is a line? A line is. How many lines in a gram? Maybe fifteen. Fifteen. Ten or fifteen. So we did like ten or fifteen. No, lines. maybe more. 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 Yeah, he yeah. bought two grams, which is substantial. Wow. That's like. If you go on a bender, what do you, you use in a gram? Yeah, you would. If you I went on a bender ball, for three eight days. Eight. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't fucking know. Gosh. If he had enough to do a bender for three days, wow! And he did it all. And he did it all within a day. Where were you? Most of it in a couple hours. And I was with him. I saw him, and I saw how he just kept going and more and more and more. And I'm like, you got to stop this shit. Like I've done it too. I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to condone it, but you need to take it easy. You're freaking me out. You're making me worry. Yeah. You know how much I care about you. I don't want to see you like this. This is really upsetting. And he felt bad and he apologized. And he was like, it's just tonight. I just got to get rid of it. I'm like, you don't need to get rid of it tonight. You don't need to do it all tonight. Not right now. Cokeheads aren't great at putting away for the future. Yeah. And he wasn't even a cokehead. It was just, he was like, it was just that state he was in, you know? Yeah. And so they went out and they talked on the stoop and kind of got through it. I came out, we talked, we hugged, said, we love you, you know, and we were starting to worry about him because he was really getting down, but we just figured it was just all the coke and him being in his head so much that we just wanted to reinforce how much we loved him and how much we were worried about him and care about him and don't want to see him like that. And so he came back, we hung out for a little bit and just laid there and talked and he was, he did some more Mm -hmm. seven in the morning Yeah. And I told him, you know, please stop. Please take it easy. You're really worrying me. I don't want to. Yeah, this Wednesday morning. And he went for another walk and he didn't come back to like noon and he didn't take his phone. And we were trying to call him. We got nervous. Like, hope you're not doing anything crazy. Please come back. Leaving him voicemails that he wouldn't hear. Mm -hmm. And he shows up around noon and we're like, Where the fuck were you? We were so worried, you know. We don't want you to get hit by a car or, you know. Mm -hmm. You didn't take your skateboard. You didn't do anything. Where, what were you going to do, you know? We were, we kind of felt maybe he could do it right now. And then he comes back and he was like, 
come on, guys. You know me better than that. I love you guys. I wouldn't do that to you. Mm-hmm. Wednesday morning, he told us that. Okay. So we, he, Jason had to go to work, and I had to go to class and get on with my day. So we leave about 11.30 noon, and he, we left him alone. And he made a couple calls. He apparently called Emily and told her that he went to the beach. I don't believe him. That he made that call? I don't that think. he went to the beach? I don't think he went to the beach. Okay. I think he called her around 2 or something. But, and said he was at the beach. But I don't think. He could be. Yeah. Who knows? He, I mean, he spent the rest of the day finishing off the Coke. The rest of the Coke. And the whiskey. And yeah. some more beers. And then when you got home, did you he, see him? no, he called Jason or he sent him a text and said, do you have keys to get in? He was like, yeah, I do. I'll see you Wait, later. Who said what? Chris said, do you have keys to get in? Ask Jason if you have keys to get in. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They had to take care of shit. That's a common I thing. Oh, I know. I know. It's such a creepy. Oh. Richard Jenny canceled all his road dates. I know. Like it's okay. So go ahead. So he made a couple of calls. I'm not sure. He called, uh, one of his best friends and yeah around 8 30 they think PM. yeah is about when he did it and he wrote a suicide note he it was all scribbled and just kind of erratic and what did the notes say it was like it was in like a little moleskin notebook uh-huh. so it was just a bunch of it was like eight or nine pages yeah but they were all like scattered so it didn't say that much but it just said like i can't i don't this world doesn't need me anymore i think he mentioned like i can't do rehab but that never came into the equation we never suggested it we never told him you need probably, to do this i bet he's it was something it yeah own. it was in his head it was like i do have to quit but i can't <sighs> yeah i need to go to rehab i don't want to go to rehab yeah and it was he was scared to be leaving the country he was nervous we were talking about it the night before that he was so scared about starting over Mm -hmm. having, I told him, I remember telling him, you can't think about, you know, all of, all of the shit, just take it piece by piece and just little, just don't overwhelm yourself when you're planning for changes like that. Just the small stuff, think about the small stuff and work towards it in little parts. Yeah. Don't just think, okay, now I have to start my life over. Yeah, go to now, meeting today. Now what the fuck today. am I going to do? I have to do this, this, this. Just start by – and he didn't even have to start over. He would have just gone to the islands. They got him a job out there. It would have been a lot easier than he thought. Yeah, everybody goes on. He just on. didn't want to be. End when you, yeah, when it doesn't. It really fucking doesn't. You, you have this feeling of, how can I go on? I can, but it's like it constantly goes on for everybody. Yeah. You'll find a job. Yeah. You'll do You'll something. find something. Yeah. You'll fall in love with another girl. Yeah. That's what we told him. And we th- also think he could have been falling for me because he was trying to convince my boy how good he had it with me, but he wouldn't commit to me. And it was, there was an interesting dynamic happening there. The he boy was, wouldn't commit to you? Yeah. Okay. But now he has. Because <laughs> of that? Yeah. In the last week? Yeah. Which is interesting. I'm sure that's not driven by emotion at all. <laughs> so well, they, there's more to it. Who, there's more to it. But Who, who, who found him? Jason walked in came home from work studio one bedroom one bedroom so he was in the common and room he did it yeah he did it on the part of the pole that he did it on right in front of the door so it's like you walk so in you see literally him. walk in door swung open oh my fucking god holy shit that yeah. was it and so he texts me and says tell her he hung himself I'm calling the cops and Wow. That was how I got the news. We spent the whole night. You went over there? Crying. I didn't go. No. Did he, cut him, did he come down or did he leave him there? He had to stay there because the cops came and then it became a crime scene. And and they cut him down? Yeah. And you mm-hmm. read the suicide note or that note? Well. The scribbles. They took the book. Okay. But we got a copy of it and we I didn't see it till later. But I then saw he, he mentioned me in it and how much he loved me and how much he cared about me and Jason and. Mm-hmm. You know, thanking us, and he left us some money, but that he just left you the money he had. Yeah, he's like, here, why don't you take it? The family, it came through with the family, and they, yeah, I'm not gonna talk about the money. Yeah, that's the fucked up thing. Was it a bunch? Yeah. Oh. 
but yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> but I feel like was, I put my note. It like, was handled wrong. I got like 50 bucks in my wallet. You can take that. No, it's a lot more. Yeah. And so, and it was, part of it was rent. Oh. That was due, due to Jason, but it, yeah. So, yeah. um, so, wow, it's been a week. It's unreal. Yeah. Hi. And he, um. Yeah, he dressed all in black. Yeah. And he dressed all in black? All in black. Wow. He finished off the rest of the Canadian Club whiskey and went down, bought him a six bought himself a six pack. This is the night before he was drinking Sam Adams IPA. Yeah. And I was like, What the fuck are you doing drinking the IPA? That shit's too strong. You gotta now it's starting to get a little cooler, you gotta get the Oktoberfest. Uh huh. And that day he went out and bought himself a six pack of Oktoberfest. Finished off five Started the sixth, had a pastrami sandwich, took a bite, and, and that was it. Suicide. Yeah, man. Yeah, and we were we were really mad at him for yeah what, what, leaving us. It was we had a lot planned for him, and we I had a lot planned for him. I saw so much in him, and he was so just right on target with so much of the stuff he said. Any like, every day he was just dropping truth bombs just oh my god chris you're so right i can't believe i didn't see it like that you know he yeah. was just he was too good for this world so you uh, he was so. he was too smart he was too fast he was too he knew his shit bill gates is too smart but he manages to keep it together he can be in this world well wait so he just so so he's just dead yeah do you stop and think about any things you could have done differently to keep him alive? Yeah, like, all the thinking? time. I mean, I keep thinking that the one that sticks in my head the most, I couldn't have done it, but if she had fucking told him before he got yeah. here, he never would have gotten the Coke. He never would have been here to get the Coke and go through this Do you situation. blame yourself for like not convincing her harder to tell him? Yeah. You don't think I should have just told him anyway? You don't think you should have told him? I don't know. You think maybe? Possibly. It's tough. I mean... It's not your real thing. Yeah. You don't know... And it wasn't my business to meddle in, and no. it wasn't... And you don't know it's going to end in a suicide, and you don't really have any you reason never to think, think that it might. Yeah. Because that's a very rare situation. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, a lot of times... And especially for him, especially for someone who was that happy and that mm -hmm. stoked on, you know... He was stoked on life. He was a happy guy. He had some dark shit, but he saw a lot of good in a lot of things, in the simple things, you know? Yeah. Jason always said he always made food look so good. He'd go next door to the shitty diner mm -hmm. next to where he worked and get the Flex burger and just oh, and just massacre it, it but yeah. made it look so good. You saw him drinking a beer and you're like, he is enjoying that beer. He yeah. is drinking that beer for all it's worth. He is living for that beer right now, living for that burger. He was just living for every moment. He was just anything he did. He enjoyed it. Played guitar, all his heart. Skated with all his heart. They'd go skating and run up to places, and yeah. he'd be like, "All right, let's skate this shit." They'd be like, "Where? There's nothing here. There's no flat ground. There's nothing to grind. There's and nothing to ride." Anyway. Just like, and he did it. And he would just go do it. And he'd be like, "Come on, just go." And he always said, "When I die, on my coffin, put some trucks on that shit and skate me." <laughs> skate in his coffin. Yeah. Like that. Skate that shit. I like that. Yeah. It's twisted and it's funny and that's the kind of guy he was, you know? Yeah. I love I love that. And all these stories came out of his service and it, service was on Sunday. On Sunday. And there were friends and people there? Yeah. A lot were his of people. parents there? Just his dad. His dad was in town to handle. The affairs. Yeah. He got cremated. What were your feelings when you heard that he died? What, try, like, what were you thinking? I was completely crushed. Did you not believe it? I believed it. I wouldn't question something like that, especially coming from Jason. Yeah. But I didn't want to believe it. Yeah. Did you know Freddie Soto when he was alive? Huh? Did you know Freddie Soto when he was alive? No. He was a comedian in Los Angeles. He didn't commit suicide. He just died suddenly. Yeah. At like 35 or something. Yeah. And it was like a, I don't know, but it was, it's different, but it's still like final. Like he's dead. That's it. There's no mm -hmm. changing it, but you sort of want to change it and you you believe it, that it happened, but you sort of don't fully believe. Yeah. 
like 80% of you believes it. Yeah. And then there's a part of you that just keeps going, I wanted, I wanted to text him. I wanted to yeah. send him a message on Facebook. I wanted to call him. Or just, still there. Yeah. Like he and might like be someone I, you would I, share I, these feelings with. Absolutely. If someone else had died, you'd be like, I would share this with you. Yeah. So I still want to share it with you. Yeah. I, and I needed him to be there to support me for his death, and he wasn't. And it was like, what the fuck, Chris? How? How? Why? Oh, God. Are you mad at him? Yeah, I was. It's. It's been a week. It's been a week. I'm not mad at him. Like, oh my God, you fucking. I'm upset that he's gone. But now yeah. I know I'm not one to talk about all the afterlife, and I have no idea what happens. I have my ideas, and everybody has their. Oh, maybe this and maybe that and join yeah. the infinite or, you know, become a spirit or nothing happens. Yeah. Whatever. I hope that he is still in that apartment. We feel like. Haunting you? Yeah, but not haunting. You're going to stay in that apartment? Well, yeah, he's going to stay there. Sort of and I've to, been huh? there the first night after it happened. We stayed at my apartment, but yeah. the next night. The next day, we went over and cleaned up his stuff, and his dad picked it up and took it home, and and we just kind of tried to make it into what it was before he was there. And we go in, and we can still smell him, you know. Yeah. He was a dirty guy. Yeah. He was really dirty. He didn't care. He'd skate and skate and skate and get so sweaty and stinky and just didn't give a fuck. Not shower. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he would skate without shoes or without socks on with his shoes and just. Kind of cheese is that man? Fucking... People, especially atheists, they, they never want to say you know there's an afterlife or anything. But in times like this, when somebody dies like badly, or when someone you really care about dies in any way, you you want to be like that's the moment where everybody wants to be like, well, he's looking down on us. But it's like if you're really gonna be an atheist, you're like, no, he's not. It's just a shame, and it's just done. Yeah. It's just that's the end of the game. Yeah. And there's no second game. I hope that's not it. I yeah. really hope that's not it. But. Who knows? Who's to say? And I can't say. But, I mean, some of the neighbors say that they can, like, feel someone watching them. And I don't know. Yeah. I hope if he is a spirit that he does stay there because we felt that he chose to do it at Jason's apartment because that was his sanctuary. That was his last home. That was where he was safe. That was where, you know, he knew he could go. Did the note say anything about... about Emily, like, fuck you. It, well, no, but he writes, the only people that he mentions by name are me and Jason. Uh And then he says, you know, I love you all, Emily included. Yeah. So kind of like, I don't want you to think that, you know, I didn't love you, but. It's tough writing a suicide note, too, because you don't want to give the person too much power. Yeah. You don't want to be like, this is all about you, because you probably have so many different things going through your mind. Yeah. You're probably like, no, I get it. You had to break up, but fuck it. I hate myself, and I want to die. Yeah. This isn't about you, so it had to be like, I love everybody. Also, Emily, you too. I forgive you. Yeah. But I don't know if he felt How does she feel? That. She is... She was really upset, of course. I mean, they had a history, and it's always hear, hard to hear that someone you've loved... <sighs> killed himself and the kind of the unspoken thing is it's because of the breakup yeah it's what led up to it yeah you know nobody wants to really say it but people kind of know that's what it was and i would say when things like that happen it's not ever a thing like i lost this job so i want to commit suicide yeah it's like there's so you already had your car like repossessed and you had like this girl break up with you and those things were bad and your mom didn't call you back that one day. Yeah. Just like a bunch of things. Yeah. How did, how did, when you said, um, I forgot what I was going to ask you. <laughs> Damn it. Something about that, that note. When you said like he didn't make it about her. Yeah. How did she take it? Um, she took it as, he loved me. That's it. That's, yeah. She took it as she wanted to. She didn't want to believe that she could lead. She that this could have been caused by her. 
That's a good nobody sign. wants to think about that. that. Nobody wants to be responsible for that. And nobody wants to be told they're responsible for that. Yeah. And nobody wants to tell she them. She must feel like that a little bit. Uh, she, I mean, she knows no sure eyes does. are on her. I'm sure she does. And I know she woke up one day and asked her mom, is this my fault? And also not a, I would a, say, you say yeah. you should have told him. Yeah. I'm not saying it's your fault. I know it was the coke and I know it was, he was in a fucked up place and he was not okay that night. He yeah. really wasn't. And that whole next day, and maybe if we hadn't have left him, maybe if we, I mean, a thousand says, maybes. And maybe Al-Anon if says you can't be, you can't stop someone from, uh, from having a disaster. Yeah. You have to stand out of the way of those because yeah. you won't stop it. It'll just delay it. Yeah. And then there's that too. We, you know, it could have happened a week. It could have happened today. That's not an exact quote. Yeah. But something along I those lines. your memory yeah. is shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it could have been delayed till this week or yeah. until he was already in the islands. Or it could have know? gotten over that period where he was going to f- do this final thing. Yeah. And if you just don't do that final thing that week, then you might never have to do it. Yeah. And we were just trying to get him through hour by hour, you know, just yeah. talking to him and just, just he, there for him. Had he dated anybody else or anything? He was uh, sleeping with somebody else. Yeah. I, her name uh, eludes me right now. Yeah, but, that's fine. Doesn't mean anything. Yeah, but he had been sleeping. And so with another girl. This note just said, "I'm, I'm, I'm." Uh, is he giving a reason for it? This world doesn't need me anymore. This world doesn't need me anymore. Yeah. The problem with writing a note, too, is you're not just writing your feelings. You're, I'm a guessing, you'd be cognizant and aware of that people are going to be reading this. Yeah. And what you want their feelings to be when they're reading it. Yeah. So it's not just like you're trying to note. convince us that he wasn't good enough for the world. Yeah. It's like bullshit. Yeah. I know that's a lie. You know that's a lie. Yeah. You wrote that. Or he's been fake, ego, fake humble your and he wanted ego you to like disagree suicide with it. wrote that. You know, that's yeah. what you want to think. That's his... Oh, that's Coke. That sounds like that's Coke. That's his selfish reasoning for... Yeah. Coke makes everything more grand. Yeah. Or your problems this are bigger. This world doesn't need your, me anymore. Your wins this are world bigger. doesn't need any of us, but we needed you. Yeah. And no, the world that. doesn't need anybody. Yeah. It'll go on fine without yeah, anybody. Yeah, exactly. It's not that... That's not what matters. We needed you. We wanted you. We loved you. I wanted to see you do more comedy. Yeah. I wanted to see where you would take it. I had this problem, too, when I was really considering doing it for like a long time. But it was like, um, people kept saying it was a selfish act. It, it is. That didn't make sense to me. I don't think it is. I mean, it's not, it's sort of, it's sort of selfless. Just because I, so I always thought just because it's like, you're not taking into account anyone's feelings. You're not saying fuck them. It's like saying, this is only about me. I don't, I guess that sounds selfish. It is selfish. But it's just more important. He didn't think people. about, he was only thinking about himself. Uh, that's probably not and true. It's... Then he left a note. It's not just thinking about himself. Well, you have to... You have to know for other people to read. If you just think about yourself, like, let's just do it. If I'm hungry, I'm just going to eat. I don't care who knows. Because it's just about Well, he, he wasn't thinking about who would see the note. He wasn't thinking about how his mom would feel. How yeah. his brothers would feel. They weren't even in the country. Yeah. You know? He wasn't thinking about abandoning me and Jason in the worst way possible. Like, we were three musketeers these past couple months. Man. We were... You know, inseparable, joined at the hip, and he literally left us. He wasn't like as close with his other friends, and he wasn't as close with Emily and her friends. That was all, and he was moving on, yeah. and he he just had me and Jason, and that was it. And he never. It's so cruel to forget us about forget about us like that. He when he knew yeah. how much, yeah, he did. He knew how much we loved him, and he knew how much we needed him. And, how, and he how knew that we would be it. there to support him while he was gone. And that we, I told him, I can't wait to see you back. I know you'll get back, without a doubt. Get back on your feet? Get back to New York. Oh, right. After he was... Save some money, figure out a new way, Yeah. and come back. Yeah. Yeah. We're just, I don't know. There's better ways to do it where no one would, get, no one would have to find out. Just say I'm moving to some country and then just cut off contact with people and then commit, do it then. Well. That way if you don't find out for five or ten Facebook years. There's Facebook and there's. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, there's, people other. are so connected nowadays. There's a, you'd always find out. Yeah. And he did it the cleanest way possible. Hanging. Yeah. Wow. Hanging. Super old school. Fun. That's an old school one. Yeah. 
That's the, there's something romantic about a hanging. Yeah. It's sort of, it's a, cl- it's a classic. Yeah. And like one of the neighbors said they heard him like. Oh, really? Yeah. But Keep they didn't around. check. Have you ever seen that um, video of, uh, I believe it was Iraq, maybe Afghanistan, but there were some dissidents and they were hanging them, three people. No. And they just like, they had him on a bar and they raised the bar up. It was like on a crane or something. Ugh. And you see them just kicking around a little oh, bit. Oh, God. Yeah. And then eventually it sort of stops. Ugh. One of them tried to keep still so it wouldn't like snap his neck or anything. But then the air starts to leave and then he can't help but. Uh, yeah. I mean, they say his neck was broken. So I don't know how, I don't know if he really was struggling. I yeah. hope to God he didn't. I Maybe really it eventually do, breaks your but... neck. I've heard that before that it, it didn't cut off your air, it breaks your neck. Yeah. And the weight. Yeah. So the heavier you are, the better. Yeah. The faster it goes. Yeah. Is he a big guy? No. He was about 5'8 and kind of, he was in good shape. He was really yeah. muscular. Had a lot of, you know, what muscle. Yeah. Not like beefed up, but you know, tough Mexican dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Skater. Oh, yeah. Strong. Skater's a Mexican. Really strong. They grew up fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> Yeah, that in wow. Yeah. So what are you going to, so how do you think you're going to change yourself from this? Have you thought of like how this affects you? It's all you? I've been able to think about. Like what can I do different in the future or how can I honor Not so memory? much, not so much what I can do different, but just how I can, I admired him so much. Yeah. I really admired him and he knew that. He you're knew lose that how admiration? much. No. Okay. He was so. He was so all about life, and he never let little things get him down. So it's shocking that he let the big thing just completely take over him. Yeah. Little stuff didn't matter. He shake it off. You know, it's nothing. Just keep yeah. skating. Just keep going. And he always that was his motto. You know, just keep doing it. Do what you're doing. You're doing right. Yeah. And then we got a big thing. He was like, "Oh, it's just too and much." Then he, and then for him, for him of all people, to give up. Yeah. It just—it's not have you, fair. Have you already thought of people that would be more likely to commit suicide, or should have before him? Yeah. Other people you know and like. Yeah. So like, I wish it was you instead of him. Yeah, absolutely. I Who know. Who else have you thought of? I don't know. <laughs> That's really. An <laughs> if evil this thought. ever gets out, I'm not it's saying who thought. I think should It'll get out. <laughs> off themselves, but. <laughs> But man, we had those thoughts before he died. It was like, how come not him? How come not that guy? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. That guy's a dick. Why not him? Yeah. You never, and you never, you never know when you can never tell. Yeah. Man. So I just want, I, I want people to know how, how much they mean to someone. Even if you think you have no one. Yeah. There's still someone out there. You can go out and just. Find someone to talk to. Find someone to help. Something. I'll tell you what it was, though. Sometimes it's not even about a problem. It's just about this never-ending pain that just doesn't go away. And after, like, you know how you feel blue for a day? Yeah. Everyone has those days. Yeah. Just, sometimes you just don't leave your apartment. It's like, fuck it. Yeah. And then sometimes it lasts two or three days. Yeah. And I've then, had those days. Yeah. And then sometimes you're like, oh, if I just leave my apartment and see the sun, I'll feel better. And you do. You force yourself to do it, and you do feel better. Or yeah. something, whatever. You get over it. Yeah. But now imagine it's going on a week and then a month. But and the this thing that pain was confusing just doesn't stop. was he would go out and find happiness in just being in the sunlight and just skating down the block mm. or going and having a beer somewhere. Yeah. He would find happiness so easily in such small things that it's like, you, why did you stop looking? Yeah. And that's, we know it was the Coke. We know it was just coming off of the Coke and just being. Is that a bad thing? Coming do, down off Coke, is that bad? Is yeah. that a bad feeling? You get, you you get, get really depressed. agitated and you get, there is a depression that comes with it. And, you know, you're still kind of shaky and jittery and just kind of like your, your thoughts are scattered and. Yeah. You just, you feel like you want to do something, but you feel like shit. You feel sick. And then, especially if it's bad Coke. If it's good Coke, it's not. Oh. It was like 60% clarity and it was like bad texture and yeah. I saw it, you know, it was shitty stuff. Yellowish green. <laughs> and he, grass. yeah, I don't know. He just, 
for some reason that night, he could not see that there would be tomorrow. Do you think he'd been thinking about it beforehand? Or was that just like, let's just do this right now? I don't know. He really never let on that he was serious about it. And that but he morning, would joke like about I it told before. you. He made, he made references to it before. Only, only one or two. In the last, in how long before him? That day. That same day. Tuesday. Had he gotten, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Had he fallen or gotten hit in the head at all? No. Got hit in the head with some coke. Yeah. <laughs> but that's it. I heard new studies about concussions leading to it sometimes. But um, nothing like that. Yeah. And like he would... I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> yeah, you were just talking about him. Yeah. Man. I feel bad. I hope they don't... Worry that I'm taking up there. I feel bad that I'm taking up there. That's fine. Apartment. That's fine. So now, how would you ch- uh, would you do anything different? I mean, are you going to look for it in your friends to like make sure they're helped, or it's t- well, you didn't see it coming. So it's like, how can you even do anything different the next time? Like, yeah. What are you going to learn from this? I will never do coke again. That's it. You're done with coke. I'm done with coke. Um, and I want. I'm telling people. Showing people, not just telling, showing people I love them and I care about them. And I feel like maybe I didn't show him enough. He knew it, but did he? I gave him free drinks and treated him to a couple things and, you know, cooked for him at the boy's apartment. Sometimes you really just need someone to tell you, just say, like, hey, man. Yeah. And we did that. We did a lot. Yeah. I mean, that morning I hugged him and I grabbed his face and I said, don't do anything stupid. I love you. And I kissed him. Well, then you did. St- you did I did. Out. I did as much as I could that morning. Yeah. And I was, I meant it. And then he looks at me and goes, oh, thanks, Jen. Buddha bless. Buddha bless you. Like, Fuck. God. So you think, I. You think when you said, when you said goodbye, he was already thinking like, all right, it's the last time I'm going to see you. I wonder. I really wonder. Because that morning there was a different look in his eyes. I mean, it was the Coke, but I wonder if he yeah. was thinking about it and just hadn't told us that. He had to be, right? There's no way it's, well, there's a way, but you would think it wouldn't just be like, God, this sucks. Oh, maybe, maybe kill myself and then just go do it. Yeah. Like, oh, maybe, yeah, I'll get a Pepsi and then drink that. Get a six like, pack and a sandwich. Yeah. And then, oh, and then kill. Yeah. He was like, he had what he wanted. He had his weed. He had money. Yeah. He had he got a six pack. Yeah. He got a great pastrami sandwich. He was overcoming his Latino heritage. Yeah. Um, he was doing it. <laughs> doing everything he could. Man. And in the middle of it, like if I had a six pack and a great sandwich and had some weed and knew I had good amount of cash. Do you have trouble sleeping? Do I have trouble sleeping? Uh huh. In the last week? No. Kind of. Been you smoking. Sleep fine? Been smoking a lot. A lot of pot. Yeah. That'll help. That'll help bury stuff. But we also are very at peace with the fact that it's what he wanted, Mm -hmm. no matter what, and it is over, and we can't change it, and we just have to accept it. And now I feel like if there is spirits, and if he is, you know, out there, yeah, he is with us, and he knows. He knows everything now. He knows he's in the infinite, and he knows that he made a mistake. But now he can be with us. And everyone is taking a part of his simplicity and his love of just everything and trying to carry it on and pass it on, you know, and let people know that they're loved and that they have somewhere to go. That's what everyone is trying to do now since it has happened. Trying to show how much people mean. To each other. Oh yeah, that's know? nice. It was like after nine eleven. Yeah. When everyone was holding doors for each other and Yeah. And I I really hope people don't forget. I really hope his friends don't forget. They will. <sighs> you see how people act to each other now. Yeah. Do you remember how it was? You were here when they killed Osama bin Laden, right? No. You weren't here? Was I? I was. Yeah. I was. Yeah. Were you in were you home were you in New York? I was probably stoned in my room somewhere. Probably. But like <laughs> everyone was nice to each other for like a, it went back to that for like a week. Yeah. I'd imagine. But then it goes away. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. Yeah. Man. But I hope somehow people are able to just 
I keep telling people, leave his number in your phone or leave that picture up or hang on to that shirt he gave you. Yeah, maybe you. his memory and will live on. They say just, that, like yeah. you live on memory. You don't really live on, but at least yeah. part of you keeps keep going. Keep something. That's People humus. admired him so much. People really loved him. And like, like I said, if you knew him for five minutes, you knew Chris. You knew what he was about. You knew how simple he was and how he could find... He could make you reevaluate your entire life while he was drunk. Yeah. Just talking shit and you're just like, whoa, oh my God, you're so right. You still crying about it? I feel like I can't anymore. I get really down. And if people, I mean, I can still, like last night at the show, there were some jokes about suicide and I can still laugh about suicide. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like. Oh it's yeah, tough, I made but... a joke about suicide. Yeah, Sorry. thanks. Yeah, think about it. <laughs> Compartmentalized so easily. Yeah, but it's part of life, and I can't. I know I can't go on and oh blah blah, blah about commit suicide. <laughs> right. I don't want to. I don't want to be that. I don't want to do that. And I, I want to. I met I met had a heckler once because he made some nine eleven joke or some sort of terrorism joke because he looks like a terrorist. Remember I met Ahmed? He's I don't know. Egyptian comedian. He looks Arab and he sounds Arab and he's, he has an Arab name. And so somebody got up from the crowd and was like, that's bullshit. You shouldn't say that stuff. My brother, my brother died in 9-11. And his answer, I loved his answer. He was like, oh, well, yeah, then this probably isn't funny to you. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. But it's funny to everybody else. But it's funny to other people and yeah. it's still a joke. And yeah, I've, I believe that if it's said as a joke and meant as a joke, lighten up. Yeah. Yeah, nobody's trying it's to hurt not, you. It's not. Nobody's. It, they didn't come to the show to get paid Somebody to do a spot things. to offend one person. Like, you know, a lot of people have serious problems with with whatever it is you joke about. Everybody like, has yeah, serious problems with everything. With everything. Yeah. You can talk about anything. And but, how you know, fucking my, my selfish are you to stand up and say, "No, you offended yeah. me, and now I want attention. I'm going to make you feel bad." Yeah, or just feel bad because it reminds you of something. Yeah. Just leave. Yeah. You don't have to listen. God. Get out. <laughs> this is comedy. Yeah. Well, comedy I'm sorry this is happened a joke. to you. It's okay. I it's okay. You'll you'll uh it's still early, but and I uh, this sounds so demeaning. <laughs> but I'm older than you and I've been say through it. some of this stuff. Say it. And it gets easier. Yeah. You'll, I know. you'll forget a little bit, your heart'll heal. Yeah. But man, it sucks. And I know I know how much I just keep thinking, I know how much he loved us. I know how much we meant to him. It's upsetting that he left it. The way he did. Yeah. But it's also... It's nice knowing that... Things didn't get worse for him. You know? Mm -hmm. That's where he wanted it to end. So... I'm not gonna... Say, no, Chris, you were wrong. Blah, blah, blah. That's where he wanted it to end. And that's where it's gonna end. Yeah. And that's it. If he is a spirit and he's hanging out... I fucking, I hope he's laughing and telling jokes and making fun of me, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just like, oh, Jen, you're so silly. You think this is about this, but now I see that it's really about this, you know, he's in the infinite, he's in the universe and he's, it's such a final decision. It's like having a kid. You can't just like, let me try and see how I like it. Yeah. It's like, it's a full, that's it. Yeah. There's no commit. Yeah. You commit to, to suicide. To, yeah. That's why I hated like saying like when you commit to someone in a relationship, yeah. it's like you're committing yeah. and that's it and it it's final, final. But it's not it's really not, that final. It's not that final and it's not that big of a deal and nothing changes. Yeah. yeah. All my friends that got married that have lived with a girl beforehand, I'm always like, do you, is there anything different? I, go, I just wear a ring. That's the only difference. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And then they break up and it's like, yeah, it's just like a girlfriend. And then you just commit to someone else. Yeah, exactly. You commit to something else. That's why I'm in favor of like, like one month marriages, <laughs> like short amount of times. Like let's just, no matter what, even if we start hating each other, let's do out the month and then we'll figure it out. Yeah. Anyway. All right. What, um, thanks for sharing. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Uh, fucking show people you love them. Yeah. And don't do Coke. Yeah. Make it known. Make it known. You don't do Coke. Make it known you love them. Make it known that you love them. I don't even think it's so that you can, that so that they won't commit suicide or that those Yeah, but it's no. almost for yourself. Yeah, make it known so that people for for them too, so that 
and I don't mean just, oh, I love you. You, yeah. know, you know, I love you. It's really, it's gotten me really thinking on how to show that you love someone. Yeah. Just little things like just, I don't know. I've been trying to take care of Jason and show him that I love him and that I am here for him yeah. and just being supportive and talking and reassuring and helping and helping around the house, doing little favors, yeah, picking him up little stuff I think he would like. Little nice things are good, a good way to show yeah. that. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a huge gesture. Peel an orange and put it in a plate in front of him. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, thanks. Oh, thanks, baby. Yeah, with nothing. Yeah. I was just like, I think you'd That's enjoy it. this. I want you to have it. Yeah. I got some chocolate on the way home. You want a piece? Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> just um, things like that. You want to tell people your Twitter address so they can follow you? <laughs> or you My or Twitter not, address. Or you're not one of people. I haven't. Oh, I'm, t- I'm terrible you're with done? Twitter now. Why? I'm not done. You used to do it all the time. I'm just, I know. But New York really New York. doesn't let you. I mean, unless you do it all the time. You're out all the time and seeing crazy things. Your mind, is, My mind is going crazy. Yeah. But so, I feel like my mind has been going so crazy that I don't have time to tell everyone about every little thing I see. I get, oh, yeah. it's amazing how busy I find myself in this city and I'm just like, oh, another day. And I, if you check my Twitter, I haven't been on it in like a month. Wow. I never used to let that shit happen. Yeah. And I keep going on there and saying, oh, I'm back. I'm going to be back and I'm going to update you guys. But I never do. And people want to know, how's New York? And what's going on in New York? You have to give them one big update and just be like, But I only have 140 characters. Love it. (laughs) Um, Love Bed-Stuy or wherever you live. Um, Friend committed suicide. Tried Johnson's Pizza. Amazing. Yeah. (laughs) Like, glance over. It's like, I don't know. I I wish, I hope I get back and do it. I did love it. And Maybe, Maybe I'm over it. I, w- I loved it before it's time. Yeah. And now that it's like everybody's on it and just like, oh I, my God, bought cat food. I bet you LOL. get people from this telling you they're sorry you went through it and like 4% of people uh, either hitting on you or saying something horrible. <laughs> yeah. You. Yeah. Which is always horrible, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, I do still check it yeah. for the comedy and mm-hmm. for, because some people, God, they get it so And so you're helping run the show with DeRosa. That's yeah. something you're doing. Yeah. Righteous Kill. Yeah. Right now, it's the People's Infob Theater. I was going to try and get Brian to get Chris on the show one time. Chris who? Oh, on Chris on, who? On that show? Yeah. Oh, okay. My Chris. The Chris we just yeah. spent an hour talking about. <laughs> yeah, sure. I could see that would have happened. Yeah. And it's it's a small enough show that it could have Less chances possibly. now. Yeah. 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 It wouldn't be as funny. No. <laughs> God, just swing there. That must have been horrible to find. I know. Just like lightly. That is... That is my worst. I don't even, I don't want to imagine what he saw. It was all blue. Had he shit himself? Probably. I mean. You never show that in movies. The muscles, I know. You never show that about death. No. Or rarely. But that is what happens when we die a couple hours later. Just shit. Everyone just shit your pants. I think that's why Jenny did it in a bathtub. (laughs) So it wouldn't be easier to clean up. It would be easier to clean up. Ugh. That's why I think for things like that. That's why I think it's not a selfish act, because you're like, I want to put people out as little as possible. I'm so sorry you have to deal with this, but it's way worse for me, and I got to deal. With, I got to do this. Yeah, it's like when your family, when your parents move, and all the kids, little kids, are like, why? You're so selfish. We love it here. And your dad's like, because I got a way better job somewhere else, and whatever the reason, we're moving. Yeah. yeah anyway. Well, it's, it's weird. It's weird to say that it's. A lot less to clean up because there is still a fucking body to clean up. Ugh, a yeah. whole dead body. God. I mean, Jason said he like felt him and like touched him. Like, you know, you want to... How do you react in that situation yeah. when you walk into your apartment and find your best friend Ooh. dead? Ooh. And he, he, he said it was the most surreal thing he's ever experienced of just like, okay, well, I have to go over... I have to go around and get my phone. I have to go like what what i well yeah. i don't even know what i would do yeah. i would scream and run out of the apartment he <sighs> like stood there and tried to absorb what was happening and it's the only way to make it real yeah. you know kind of touch him and said he was cold and stiff already and when i saw freddie's body at the wake that was the first time i, I got it yeah. i was like oh that's a dead body yeah okay he's dead 
Yeah. I see it. We didn't even get to see a body. You didn't? Yeah. And, you know, they said his neck was Ugh. stretched. Like those African ladies with the plates? Yeah. But a little crooked. But, but less. <laughs> less home. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm so right. happy I can make jokes about it. I yeah, that's nice. I was afraid you'd cry the whole time. I did not want to cry. Yeah. I spent five, six times. days straight I saw, your, crying. I saw your eyes water up. Yeah. You held it. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Choke it down. Choke, choke it, it down. Suck it down. Be an American. Don't show feelings. If Chris is with me, he's like, come on. Fucking really? You're going to cry again? Yeah. Really? What's Bitch? What's that going to do for you? <laughs> um, all right. Old episodes. This You can uh, subscribe to this. The skeptic thing. They're different between things like this and, and Holocaust survivors and uh, porn stars and people who fuck hookers all the time. It's a very eclectic mix of interviews. I'm so proud to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can find them on iTunes or hopefully Stitcher or on my website, AriTheGreat.com. And old episodes should be available there too or on TV. And then, I don't know, that's a, you want to yeah. say anything to the people? You did. Love each other. I'm Benny Sonics on Twitter. See if I show up. Benny Sonics. <laughs> yeah. She might be there somewhere for the next two years. Or look for me on the next future networking site. Oh, yeah. Whatever the next thing is. Whatever is it thing? is. I feel like you would know what it is. I don't know what it is yet. It's not LinkedIn. No. That thing looks annoying. And hey, you know what? What? I might try and make it. Oh, yeah. I'll bring it back. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's my new pro- prodigy. Bring back LinkedIn. I still get emails every once in a while. Hey, they still want to be your friend. Maybe you can have it named after Chris and have it in his honor. LinkedIn Or have like some weird hangman game. No, maybe that's too far. (laughs) Hangman is never going to be the same. I was trying to pitch this idea. I know this girl who's like 80 pounds and we're trying to make this Holocaust video, but we want it to not sound too like anti-Holocaust because I just went to the memorial and I just fucking feel too much now. Not too anti-Holocaust. It's okay to be anti-Holocaust. Oh, right. Exactly. It's pretty... <laughs> Not too crass. Or... <laughs> but I was like, how about a hangman game where the Germans are just playing hangman with you and trying to like add guessing letters. And every time they guess a Z, you'd be like, really? Z? Ugh. As you had to like get closer to being hung. Yeah. I don't know. Words with Friends just came out with that hanging with friends. Really? Yeah. It's like a hangman app. Wow. God. Yeah, that's pretty so morbid. That's twisted. a weird, morbid game. Hangman. Yeah. You add a limb to them, and eventually their limbs will be heavy enough to weigh them down and hang them. Yeah. Fucked up. You got an arm, then a body, then another arm, then a leg, then another leg. And that, you're dead. What a terrible childhood game now that I've yeah. seen. Ugh. How about just you get six wrong guesses <laughs> or whatever it is, the amount of limbs. Like, how about that? And then, and then you lose. What if you again. just guess letters? What if nothing yeah. happens? Because nothing happens at the end of the game. Yeah. You just lose. Yeah. <laughs> you don't kill. Why hang? Yeah, just have a like your... add add little pellets into the gas mixture until you've got enough, and you can kill a family. You guess the wrong amount of letters. Now analyzing this game, you just are. It sounds horrible. You're just doing it to kill the. Yeah. Kill him. <laughs> just there is it. no way to end Hangman other than him hanging. Yeah. Although, yeah, you guess, you, ah, you got the word. Like, okay, can you cut me down? Like, no, we're going to play again. Nope, play again. Kill him. Stay up there. <laughs> <laughs> Take all right, off thanks, all your Jen. arms and legs. Start yeah. over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you, Ari. Um, bye, everybody. <laughs>